it's been horrible. I'm <laughs> Now at 5, flight cancellations leave thousands of passengers stranded at Salt Lake City International Airport, some having to spend Christmas there with still no idea of when they'll finally get out. Plus, terrifying moments in Provo Canyon as an ice climber plummets down frozen Bridal Veil Falls, forcing a daring rescue to save him. And... Best Christmas ever. Um a holiday reunion story for the ages as a latent teenager meets her biological parents for the first time. It's a story you will only see here on ABC4. Live, we're there for you. ABC4 News at 5 starts now. Good evening, everybody, and thanks for being with us. I'm Rick Aaron. Glenn and Emily have the night off. On this day after Christmas, Salt Lake City International Airport is chaotic and crowded, overflowing with beleaguered and irate travelers, some who have been stranded there for days, and it could be even longer until they finally make it home. ABC 4's Ali Orulian is live at the airport. So, Ali, this is really frustrating for these passengers. This kind of travel disruption, never ideal, but I guess it's even worse during the holidays. What are you hearing from them? That's right. I mean, today's been absolutely crazy. According to Flight Aware, Salt Lake City International Airport has had 73 canceled flights. I mean, can you believe it? And a lot of those people have had flights canceled for days, and most of them, over half of those cancellations of South West Airlines. And people have been waiting in line to talk to a representative or anyone to get things figured out for hours. But it's not just Southwest Airlines that we've seen being crazy. They're aligned for TSA wrapping around the airport to the escalator today. Unclaimed bags piling up as flyers are stuck in unknown destinations trying to get to Salt Lake and hundreds of people waiting in line to try and get some answers from Southwest Airlines as their flights keep getting canceled. Multiple people telling me they've been waiting for two hours and haven't even made it halfway through the line. When they try to call customer service, there's no answer. One woman saying she's been stuck for three days without her medication. A family with a 16th month year old baby telling me they've been stuck since Saturday and at this point have decided to drive home all the way to Houston instead of take the airline. They say they were supposed to be home for Christmas but instead ate gas station food in a hotel that's not being compensated for. They are refusing to pay for the hotel room, refusing to give us money vouchers or anything just because they're trying to blame the weather for all of this. Now, South, Southwest Airlines releasing a statement saying in part that they will be giving refunds to people and that a lot of these delays are due to the winter weather that we've been seeing nationwide over the weekend and some staffing shortages. I'll keep you updated on all these reactions because let me tell you, flyers are not happy. That's coming up on ABC4 News at 6, reporting live at the Salt Lake City International Airport. I'm Ali Orulian, ABC4 News. All right, Allie, thank you very much. Now to that daring rescue near Bridalville Falls in Provo Canyon. That 607 foot high waterfall is very popular with ice climbers when freezing temperatures turn the cascade into a sheer vertical wall of ice. Well, today, just after 11, a 29 year old climber plummeted 40 feet down the wall, breaking his arm in the process. This happened just after 11 o'clock in the morning and over three hours later, a helicopter from the Utah Department of Public Safety finally airlifted him down to an ambulance. Officials tell us without that chopper, that climber could have been stuck for six to seven hours. Tonight, he is in the hospital receiving treatment for that fractured arm and a back injury. In Weber County, an Ogden man who was separated from his dog while hiking near Waterfall Canyon had to spend Christmas Eve without her. You see, Nala was stranded overnight when the sun went down, forcing her owner off the mountain. Then on Christmas morning, the man returned, spotting her above the waterfall, but he was not able to reach her. Finally, early on Christmas evening, a miracle. This drone video captures Weber County rescuers making their way to Nala. They say she was shaken up, but she is one tough canine. Nala and her owner could not have been any happier to see each other.
Must have been very cold spending Christmas Eve night up in the canyon there. Let's check in with meteorologist Thomas Giboy now. Uh, not that cold down here today, but a lot of haze in the air in the Salt Lake Valley. Thomas? Yeah, so we got cloudiness. We have the haze. Temperatures are at least somewhat nice if you wanted to spend some time outside today. But we got some pretty big changes that are going to soon be heading our way. But looking at these temperatures currently, again, doesn't feel too bad if you're going to go out for an evening stroll. We're sitting at 43 degrees in Salt Lake City. It's 34 degrees in Provo, so a little bit chilly down in Utah. County. It's 40 degrees in Cedar City, 53 in St. George, 46 in Lake Powell, and we're sitting at 38 degrees in Moab. So the temperature is not too bad, but we do have the we do have the cloudiness and also the haze around. Here's the view outside here at ABC4 News Studios with our Colonial Flag camera. Got a little bit of a southerly wind. And that southerly wind is actually going to bring even slightly warmer temperatures tomorrow and eventually will knock the haze out of here. But right now the air quality is still not the greatest, so it's something that you want to keep in mind. That haze will be sticking around through tonight along with those clouds. But we do have more clouds moving in from the west, and there's a system now approaching the Pacific or approaching the Pacific Coast and that's going to be moving into our neighborhood by the time we get into tomorrow. The National Weather Service has already gone ahead and issued winter weather advisories for all of our Utah mountains, Wasatch Plateau, Book Cliffs and southwestern Wyoming because this will begin tomorrow and will carry through Thursday morning and we could see over a foot of snow for a lot of our mountains in the Beehive State. But we'll break down the details and the timing and what you need to know coming up in just a few minutes. Rick. All right, Thomas, thank you. Now to developing news out of Idaho, where the continuing investigation into the slayings of four university students in Moscow has left police still without a suspect and coming up short on leads. The seeming stagnation of the investigation is propelling social media users to do their own investigating, causing an unnerving pattern of misinformation spreading like wildfire on the Internet. A University of Idaho professor is now suing a TikToker from Texas for defamation. That TikToker accused the teacher of ordering the four victims execution. What we want to say is, is we are the official source of information and anything that comes from other sources um, is either rumor or speculation. According to the University of Idaho, the professor accused of involvement in the quadruple murders had never even met the victims. In the meantime, Moscow police continue their investigation. They have taken 12,000 tips from across the country called in so far on the case. Back here in Salt Lake County, Murray City firefighters knocked down a fire burning between two apartments on Sultan Circle yesterday. No one was injured in the Christmas Day fire and crews were able to save a cat. But unfortunately, the flames sent two families searching for a new place to celebrate Christmas. First responders tell us that the fire likely started in the chimney, adding that built up soot is a common cause of house fires this time of year. They say it's a reminder to clean out your chimney every year. Now to an ABC4 exclusive, a Christmas reunion nearly two decades in the making. You see, a latent teenager had never met her biological parents, and she got to spend the holiday with them for the first time yesterday. ABC4's Kayla Baggerly has her heartwarming story. What you're seeing here is two families finally coming together after a 17 year wait. There were lots of tears, smiles and hugs. They say that being able to meet was a Christmas miracle. It was better than any gift I could get. Mm -hmm. It was waiting 17 years um, to see her and finally seeing her and being able to hold her and touch her was a, a feeling that um, only a, only a parent could understand. When Diana Upchurch met her biological parents and siblings last Thursday, it was all hugs. It was just like, okay, family, yeah. we're all here. Brian and Dana Laws from Philadelphia say the last time they saw Diana was when she was two days old. It was nothing but tears. Yeah. Nothing but tears. It was just sadness, emptiness. They say although it wasn't easy to put their little girl up for adoption, the Upchurch family from Layton seemed like the right choice. Just seeing the love that they were sharing through the pictures and looking in each other's eyes and the smile, you could tell that they were genuine. The Upchurches shared when they first got to hold Diana, it was a wonderful moment. It's nothing like looking at your baby for the first time. This August, Diana got in contact with the Laws for the very first time on Facebook Messenger and began chatting with them online. Instant tears, I came in and told my wife and um, tears hurt. You know, she had tears and we're just looking at each other like, yeah. 
the days here. We've always been supportive and we knew that there would be a day that um, that we would reconnect. We just didn't know in what form that would be. I was just kind of nervous. Mm -hmm. just it was a big, really big moment, but Absolutely. once you get over that sort of um, mental block, it was, it was so worth it. Now, they were all able to meet and spend the holidays together, and they say it felt like they were all just one big family. Like this Christmas, having both families just like together and in a room together, just like playing games all together was so like awesome and cool. Absolutely, the best Christmas ever. Um, no words can express that, that yeah. feeling. Um, like I just keep saying that the, the feeling of Feel, you know, that first hug, mm -hmm. the first embrace was just um, the feeling of being complete. The laws went back home on a plane today, but say this isn't goodbye, but a see you later and are excited for this new chapter in their lives. They say they look forward to visiting with Diana again soon. Back to you. The official death count from the Erie County Medical Examiner's Office for all deaths in Erie County was 25. Still ahead, unrelenting snow continues to fall in already buried Buffalo, New York. The latest on the rising death toll and how locals there are hunkering down to survive. And it's a beautiful Monday evening up at Powder Mountain. Plenty of snow to look at, but as we move into Tuesday and Wednesday, we have a lot more snow on the way for our Utah mountains. We'll break down the details in Utah's most accurate forecast coming up shortly after the break. Stay with us.